Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with instructor lead Adam Seaman at the Performance Center West here in Thermal. So we just completed M Track Days. Mm -hmm. Is that something you look forward to every year? Every year. Every year. We look forward to having it here at the Thermal Club every single year. It's the last stop of the tour, um, and we always try to save the best for the last, put on a good show for the, the participants, and, and give them a good time at yeah. the end of the tour. And I can vouch for it. It is an awesome show, especially the hot laps at the end. Yeah. So I'll have some video coming up with uh, Emil Beret chasing down Adam in an M2 competition. Yeah. Real close. We couldn't see anything because he was burning so much tires. Up. Yeah. It was awesome. It's the drift machine, man. Well, exactly. M2 comps, awesome. So speaking of drifting, mm -hmm. you got your start in drifting. Mm -hmm. how, it's like, why did you want to go into drifting? How did you make the transition from drifting to instructing? Um, well, to be honest with you, drifting is, is something that appeals to kind of a, a different generation, a different type of uh, motorsports enthusiast. Um, most of us have some sort of extreme sports background. Right. Um, and drifting is a lot about style and expressing yourself, uh, in addition to driving fast cars. So uh, it was a natural choice for me, uh, especially at the young age I was. I started when I was around 21 years old. Uh, and and, and for record, he's only 26 now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gray hair. Um, so yeah, 21 years old, and, and uh, it was a natural choice. And, you know, it, it, it kind of uh, it helped me develop the skills I needed to be an instructor because you're pushing the cars beyond the limits. Um, all the time, and it's all about the finesse and putting the car where you want it and that car control, and yep. then that helps you to run a fast lap. You dial it back, and you can run that fast lap. You know what you need to do. Um, and then how it helped me actually become an instructor, uh, I, I competed against one of the BMW Performance Driving School instructors and actually beat him. Is that, uh, uh, would that be Tommy? Nope, 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 Tommy? Wouldn't, nope. He came on later on. He, came okay. on. he started drifting a little later on. Uh, it was actually a fellow named Jim Millard, really nice guy, super talented. Um, drifting is subjective, right? So it's a judge sport, um, and it doesn't mean he wouldn't have came back and beat me at a different event. It was just my turn to win. Right. Um, we started emailing back and forth. He brought me out, and it was all history from there. Yeah, so bringing him out was basically South Carolina, not mm -hmm. here. So right. that's this is a different story here. Mm -hmm. So you joined the Performance Center in 2009, mm -hmm. and then... How did you progress from just an instructor out to becoming instructor lead out here at PC West? Well, a little known fact is that actually when I started at PC East, um, I was a logistics guy. I was a, a cone oh, grabber. Yep. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, was, yeah. I was a cone grabber. So I did that for about a year, a year and a half. And finally, Matt Mullins, the, the chief instructor of the, both facilities at this point, um, he, get, he knew I wanted to become an instructor. He gave me my shot. Um, I knew I had one opportunity, so I did what I could. thought I was doing a decent job, obviously. <laughs> he thought so as well, um, and I instructed from about two th middle of 2010 until 2000, end of 2014. Right. Um, at that point, I had quit drifting um, competitively, at least. Uh, I was still drifting every day at work. Exactly. Um, and I had no ties in South Carolina other than that's where I was raised. I had no wife or kids or anything like that. So when they decided to open the West Coast facility here, it was easy for me to come out and be one of the guys. And, and I was coming out just to be a, a full-time instructor. Um, so you didn't know? I didn't know, didn't know. Yeah. And after about three months of being here, uh, it just kind of it fell into my hands. I said, guess what, Adam? Mm -hmm. You're the lead out That's here. That's right. Guess what? You're the guy. That's exactly what they said. Well, you're the guy now. And what a guy he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go into a couple of quick questions here. What was your first car? First car was a Jeep Wrangler, a 1995 Jeep Wrangler 4x4 that was lifted with big mud tires. Of course it was. <laughs> And what do you currently drive? Uh, current car, uh, I have a few vehicles. Um, my current company car is a new 2019 Z4, um, or it might be a 2020. Uh, either way, it's a new either Z4. Way, brand new one. Yeah. Brand new Z4, right. Um, I also have a big F250 four-wheel drive pickup. Of course. Um, yep, diesel pickup truck 2017, and that's to, to haul the toys, the boat, um, the trailer. I still have my drift car and my trailer, <laughs> so I have to have a truck to be able to haul that. Uh, and then I still have my drift car. It's ripped apart in the garage right now, but I still so have so it. like the project car that will never get completed. Yeah, exactly. It's the project <laughs> car that doesn't even get worked on at this point, but um, maybe one day. Right. So, how about top three cars that you've driven? Maybe let's stick with the street cars here. Mm -hmm. Maybe within the fleet here that okay. you've actually had the pleasure of driving. Within the fleet here, or within the all-time fleet. Oh, let's go all-time. All-time. But so one of the all-time favorites for me has got to be the the E60 M5. <sighs> Now, 500 horsepower V10, 8,250 RPM, uh, red line, real screamer. Mm -hmm. um, pretty easy to drive. It only yep. made around 400 pound feet of torque, so um, it wasn't, you know, too intimidating. 
Mm -hmm. You could get on the gas pretty aggressively. It was. Well, let's see. Oh, oh it's, it's, it's dead. Ah, well, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. All right, so before we were rudely interrupted by the camera getting too hot, we were talking the E6 EM5 was mm -hmm. one of your favorites. Yep, absolutely it was. Yeah, really easy car to drive. Uh, the little uh, 1M coupe. That oh, I remember that because yep. I was there. I think mm -hmm. we were the last class to use it, and mm -hmm. you were teaching that day Yep. for the M Club Day. Yep. It is an awesome car. Fantastic car. Six-speed, um, really good t power delivery. Uh, what was great about the car was that it had the short, little, twitchy wheelbase, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and if you know how to take advantage of that, it was a blast to drive. Um, it was rewarding to drive at the limit. You get the thing a little sideways, just a little slip angle coming off the corner, and you knew you were flying. Right. Um, and I'll be honest with you, after hot laps today, I think maybe the new M2 competition. Oh, the M2C. Because yeah. Adam got to drive the M2C. Everyone mm -hmm. else did the M5 competition. Yep. yep, and we never used those cars for hot laps, ever. Uh, the only reason I did today was we were out of M5s. I didn't have a car for hot laps, so I jumped in one said, you know, I want to do some driving today, too. And, man, that's a ripper. It's it a is. Ripper. So I've got video of that because I was in the M5C behind mm -hmm. you with Emil trying to stay as close as possible mm -hmm. to you. But we could barely see anything with all the smoke he was kicking up. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, and, and he had a little bit of an advantage uh, in the fact that not only did he have all-wheel drive, I don't know if he had it on, but I didn't have any Two -wheel tires drive. left, guys. Two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive for sure. I had already done three laps, and tires were baloney skins at that point. But I was trying. Yeah. I was trying my best to well, get out of the I'll have to say, that was Emil's fourth hot lap. Oh, really? So I was sitting in okay. two of them before that. So maybe we'll call it even. We'll call it even. But the M2 was faster. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. But it was a lot of fun. All right. So how about top three tracks that you've driven? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so I got to throw out Road Atlanta. Road Atlanta is a, uh, a real driver's track. It's got the elevation change. If you make a mistake, the walls are close. Um, and it's fast. It's super oh, yeah. fast. Uh, got to throw out VIR, Virginia International Raceway. That's one of our home tracks. We did advanced sim schools there for years and years. Um, and it's just gorgeous there. All Absolutely. Great track to drive on. Lots got of that cool. Sounds good. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, lots of elevation change. Uh, and then I have to throw out the Nurburgring. I've had the pleasure of driving the Nurburgring. And Absolutely. It, it doesn't get much better than green, the Green Hell. Awesome. What about top three tracks that you that's throw on your bucket list? Bucket list. Hmm. Well, I mean, Laguna Seca is one of them just because of the name and the history behind it. Uh, I've never driven Lime Rock. I'd love to drive Lime Rock as Good well. Good choice, yeah. Um, what else? The third one's a tough one. Maybe Spa. I knew it. Spa, Spa Nürburgring right there. Mm -hmm. yep. Do both of those. Freaking yep. awesome. All right, so the last one. How about three car, dream car garage? Money, no object. I'm an oddball. I would not have. Uh, I would not have what you would think. I would probably have three ten thousand dollar cars in the garage that that had you know engine swaps and needed a bunch of work and <laughs> that's just the kind of guy i am but um you know i like the i like the f80 m3 a lot yep. I, I believe I, I could have that all the time uh i like um it's not a bmw but I want, I want a viper acr extreme i've always wanted one of those yep uh and you know, I, I've always wanted uh, an old F100 with a big block in it, lowered six-speed, you know, tr manual transmission in the floor there, just a resto mod. That'd be um, awesome. Yep, to cruise around <laughs> town in. Yeah, definitely some oddball choices there. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Byron, who I interviewed last, well, later this year, said he wanted a limo. No, oh, People would drive him around. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a race car driver answer, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, Adam, thanks for your time. Thank so you. So you can catch Adam here at TC West. Come see him. If you're a CCA member, 15% off. That's right. And it's guaranteed great time. Right? I mean, it's guaranteed great time. It's hard to leave here without a big smile on your face. Absolutely true. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Is it right? Holy crap, it's hot. The camera got hot. Let's see. Is that a new, is that a five? That's a seven. Seven. I thought about buying a new eight. Damn, that is hot. Now, will they replace it for this lens? Or does that even bother it? It hasn't bothered it, but they're easy to replace. Okay. It's like a twenty dollar part. Oh, Trust cool. me, I've broken so many here. Cool. <laughs> they fall off so many times. They do. I always I try to warn people.